It is my pleasure to welcome to VLGA Connect for the first time, Victoria's Commissioner for Gender and Sexuality, Ro Allen. Ro, lovely to see you. Oh, lovely to see you again, Chris. And thank you very much for agreeing to speak with us. Uh, it's a really important time at the moment because your LGBTIQ uh, discussion paper is out for consultation and I thought it would be worth talking through the, uh, the, the path, the journey to this point and what you're, you're expecting. It's been, I imagine, uh, quite a lot of work in the making to get to where we are. Yeah, and what a perfect time why we're in isolation to read a fabulous discussion paper and do some thinking and some writing of a submission to us. Uh, it's, it is exciting. It's the first time we've had a whole of government LGBTIQ strategy, Chris. And, uh, you know, when we first went into this COVID period, I thought, how are we going to do the consultations? But, you know, the community has pivoted onto Zoom and, you know, I've now Zoomed into probably more people's um, experiences in the community than maybe we would have had from face-to-face -face consultations. So, you know, we've yeah. done nearly close to 30, uh, you know, community consultations, multicultural, Aboriginal, LGBTI, rural and regional, which, you know, they're loving Zoom because everybody's on the same playing field and, and they can attend these things. Uh, you know, it's been really diverse uh, community input. So, um, yeah. you know, we're getting some very rich, rich um, feedback. T terrific. I I've had, and, and I agree, that's a really good way to look at, I, I guess, a silver lining of some sort out of, uh, out of COVID-19. Um, had a look through the discussion paper. There's so much in there we don't have time to unpack, of, of course. Some pretty sobering stats as well. How do you summarise why we need this whole of government strategy in the first place? Well, in Victoria, we've come a really long way. And in the discussion paper, you'll see a snapshot, you know, a visual of a graph of the last hundred years and a lot of the reforms have happened in the last five years but we've still got more to do we know that lgbti people in victoria are still discriminated on a daily basis and you know a lot of people think that we've got marriage equality and everything's fixed now but you know mm -hmm. we're actually seeing some of the metrics go backwards we're seeing 17 percent less people out in the workplace uh, than than uh, last year for example so right. they're seeing some of the backlash of some of the reforms that we're having, I think. So, you know, the local governments are huge employers. So it's not just about uh, the community that they serve, but it's the community that work for them as well. Uh, they're a very large employer of youth workers who work with some right. of the most vulnerable uh, young LGBTIQ folk. Uh, there's, a, there's a lots of levels to, um, to why we need it. We need inclusive workplaces. We need inclusive health services. And again, local governments deliver a lot of health services. We know that for seniors in our community, they put away their photos or they can put away their photos and, and things about themselves because they feel like the home help may discriminate against them um, when they come into their homes. You know, and getting, getting older can be a vulnerable time. So we don't want people to go back into the closet to, to receive local government home care services and support and those sorts of things. Right. So it is important that we, we hear from everyone, we hear what the issues are and, Particularly, Chris, as you can understand, I'm looking for some solutions too. I'm looking for ideas, um, not just a set of problems uh, about what the, you know, the government should be doing and, and um, how we can improve it for, for folks. I was going to ask you that very question, Ryan. I think you mentioned you've done 30 or so or more consultations so far. Are people coming forward with ideas and solutions that perhaps you hadn't heard before? Uh, yeah, there is certainly some solutions or some suggestions, uh, some that are in scope and some, of course, that are out of scope. Um, you know, fix climate change, Commissioner, or it's no point having any, any you know, like there's obviously a few yeah. things that are out of scope, um, but really practical things, um, really practical ideas. I won't give them all away, but, you know, yeah. things that will make a difference. Data, data keeps coming up all the time, how we record data about our population would make a huge difference difference for services going forward so i'm sure there'll be some section uh, you know in there that addresses that but you know ideas are important and this is the discussions all of the the zoom consultations have been a chance to explore ideas and uh you know bounce bounce ideas around with each other that have been on the call and um you know we've we've seen some really great innovation come out are you hoping to hear from local government as part of this process or is local government engaged in the in the consultation? I would love to hear from local government. We need all levels of government uh, and community and not-for-profit organisations involved in this because there is only so much the state government has control over, of course. We have levers and things but and funding and service agreements, but we really need local governments to um, 
to yeah to engage and and there are some fantastic examples uh chris of local governments that are doing amazing things locally for the lgbtiq community we've been able to capture some of that and certainly with the rain, um, local government association rainbow resource we've been able to catch a best practice but i think that's that's really important that in the strategy we really you know highlight where where we're going well i mean i think it shouldn't all be doom and gloom there are yeah. some great pockets and, and of um, excellence in the field, we should highlight that so other local governments can, can learn from that, can strive to, to be as inclusive uh, for everybody in their electorate. Are there any pockets of the community that you're not hearing from yet that you're concerned that uh, uh, they might get missed, that you'd like to make uh, an appeal to? Well, I think um, clearly this interview, I'm making an appeal to local governments to, yeah. to pursue a submission uh, because they're a key level of government in this. Uh, we've, we've worked really hard to get to the multicultural, multi-faith community. Um, we could work harder. Uh, local governments can assist us by advertising into those communities. We want to make sure we don't leave anybody behind in that. Uh, we've had asylum seeker, uh, refugee consultations with, you know, sex workers, we've done all sorts of intersections within that, but um, we know rural and regional, we, we, could do, we could do more in that. So if there are local governments in regional Victoria um, that would, would like to help us uh, by promoting the, the opportunities, and we, we're open till the 3rd of August. So, you know, there's time to do submissions and submissions don't have to be, you know, war and peace. They can be a couple of paragraphs. They can be an idea. They can be a full academic piece, wherever you're at. Um, I think is, is important that we, we hear from as many people as we can. So uh, you mentioned 3rd of August, I think, is the closing date. What happens from that point, Ro? When do you expect to see a strategy out of this? Well, um, we hope to have some initial findings. We want to go back uh, to community you know, early next year and say, this is what we've heard. Are we on the right track um, with something in later 2021? But you know, I, I, I'm not holding an exact date because I want to do it right. You know, I don't want to rush it. And I know that it's taking longer under COVID requirements and everybody's a bit stretched in government as well as in community. So we don't want to rush it, which is why we're extended our timelines. Uh, because, you know, we want to get a strategy in place. And you know, that once, once the strategy is printed, it's printed and you can't sort of go back at that point. So I'd rather we spend the time um, and get it right uh, and get as many voices in there and get as many things uh, agreed to by government uh, that we could have in the strategy so that it's a, it, it's really a living document um, into the future. Terrific. It's, it's pretty hard to hold to any timelines at the moment as things are changing pretty much from, from week to week or day to day even in some cases. Under promise and over deliver is Excellent. what I'm working on as a strategy at the moment, Chris. Always, always a good approach to take. You mentioned the VLGA Rainbow Guide, which I know is a tool to assist councils in in making sure that their activities are LGBTIQ plus inclusive. Um, how has that been received? And is, uh, is it that's the sort of tool that you see might coming out of the strategy in some other areas? Yeah, I, I would expect that with that tool will be updated as part, you know, I'd like to see that regularly updated with good practice. Uh, you know, and local governments, you know how they are, they're a bit competitive. They're looking around to see what everybody else is doing. It's it's, it's sometimes it's hard to be the first local government to put up a rainbow flag, but now we've got, you know, Ida Hobbit Day and, and rainbow flags going up all over the place. So I think it's about, you know, spreading it amongst the, you know, amongst the, the local government association and, and just saying, look, you know, the sky doesn't fall uh, when, you, when you do inclusive practice and you talk about LGBTI issues and, 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 and getting champions and um, having champions support each other. And I think that's where the resource has been really helpful where, They've seen examples. They can ring someone from that council and say, "How did you do that?" You know, and I think that's that's the the camaraderie that we need to to make sure that we're all moving ahead in this space. So, as you mentioned, there's been some some progress in recent years, but there's still a lot more that can be done, and the strategy is going to be a very part, a important part of driving that further change that's needed. I note that you've been in the commissioner's role for over five years now, Ro. Yep. I bet that's gone fast. How are you feeling about uh, well, what you've been able to achieve in that time? Look, sometimes it feels like five minutes and sometimes it feels like five years. And, um, you know, every day, uh, you know, I get out of bed and I feel so blessed to be in this role. Um, I feel the weight and responsibility of it, but I also feel the honour. And it, look, I, 
I think if you'd told my 15 year old self I was going to grow up and be the commissioner for LGBTI communities in Victoria, I would have said you're absolutely nuts. Um, which is, you know, what I tell young people all the time that it does get better, you know, and I'm, I'm still sad that I'm the only commissioner that we don't have a commissioner in other states and other states certainly looked at looked at it and communities within the other states want their governments to have a commissioner. So I'm turning my focus a little bit to working with them um, with others to promote the values of it. Uh, we certainly have seen, you know, my complete bias aside, we've seen um, a lot of change in Victoria. And I think it's just, it's having a commissioner to be able to push across all the portfolios of government and facilitate a whole of government strategy. Someone whose KPIs determine on it, you know, someone whose job it is and, and not asking someone in a voluntary capacity to do this work all the time. I know it makes, it makes it makes a difference, and and not just a commissioner. We have a minister for equality, a minister for LGBTI, and so we have you know at the cabinet table we have someone, and you know people go, well, why do we need it? Well, our health outcomes are still at some of the lowest levels. Our suicide and self harm uh, are at some of the highest, uh, you know, in Australia, um, and we're seeing that, and and that discrimination is just being magnified during COVID. So, you know, unfortunately, um, well, many of us are doing fabulously and moving through the world uh, fine, but many of us still aren't. And, uh, you know, that's why this government is committed to, to working with the LGBTI community to, to embed systemic change. And we know a strategy will do that because, you know, as everyone in government knows, if you have a strategy, you have key performance indicators and you have accountability. And at the end of the day, you can have all the carrots you like, but, you know, people want to see, you know, every election commitment or every, um, yeah. every recommendation ticked off and it'll make, it'll make a big difference as well as the statement of having a strategy, um, the commitment and getting it all uh, implemented and embedded is going to be really important. So some, some good reasons there for people to be uh, aware of and participate in the process. Uh, the submissions are open until the 3rd of August. Details on the Engage Victoria website. Ro, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. Congratulations on what you've achieved so far and all the best through this process. Hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. I'd love to. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. That's been Ro Allen, the Commissioner for Gender and Sexuality in Victoria, joining us on today's episode of VLGA Connect.